Hi, I'm Tim Taylor, District Manager with Thermonite Industries. And I'm Ken Heinrichs. I'm a welding and metal fab instructor at Waukesha County Technical College. We're here today to talk about cutting with alternate fuels. Tim, if I were to change to an alternative fuel, what equipment might I need to change as well? That's a good question, Ken. There's, there's three things that you have to look at when you change. Number one, if you're using a Victor equipment like the torch here, this is, a, this is an all, all fuel gas torch. So I can use any, tor any fuel gas with this equipment. What I have to change is the tip. Because of the burning velocity of the gases we talked, I can't run the alternate fuel gas through an acetylene tip. You also have to inspect your hose and see, make sure that it's a T-grade hose. The acetylene hose, most, most of them around are R or RM grade hose. This, you need a T-grade hose for alternate fuel. And finally, you want, to, you want to look at your regulators and make sure that you have the appropriate regulator. Go from an, the acetylene regulator, go to an alternate fuel gas regulator, so it's built for the gas intended to use. Tim, you said the tips are different. Can you tell us some of the differences? Sure. Let's take a look. This is an acetylene tip. And if you remember when we talked about the burning velocity or the speed is burning back to you, well, we want to keep that flame just outside the end of that tip. Now because when you go switch to your alternate fuel gases, we still want to get the same performance out of the tip. So we've engineered this tip to work with alternate fuel gases. In this particular case, this is a propylene tip. You'll notice the recess. When the propylene gas burns, we want to keep the flame attachment up close to the end of the tip. So we recess the tip. You'll notice there's a difference between this one and this one. One is deeper than the other. One is a natural gas tip, one is a propylene tip. Each one of those gases have a different burning velocity, so we recess the tip differently. Some people say alternative fuels are hard to use. Is that true? It's a good question. There's actually three ways to light the torch. And the best way to show you is to actually physically light the torch. But keep in mind, the first thing we want to remember is safety. Make sure you use the proper equipment, the proper safety gear before you light the torch. I'm going to use this visor here, but uh, safety glasses are fine. The first way that we're going to that we're going to light it is probably the most common way, especially if you're used to acetylene, because this is the way you've used acetylene before. Is I'll turn I'll turn the I'll turn the uh, fuel gas on about a quarter of a turn, then I'll add the oxygen. Then I can walk it up to the desired flame that I want. Depress the cutting oxygen, readjust if necessary. When I'm done, you always want to hear that little whistle sound. Okay, when I'm done, make sure you shut off the oxygen first, the fuel gas last. Now that's the most common way to do it. If it's a little windy out or uh, you've got the fan blowing on you in July, you might want to keep the wind off the flame. So this is another way to do it. What I can do is turn, turn it on a quarter of a turn again. And you'll notice if I turn this all the way up where I want the flame to be, and I add oxygen, it'll blow itself out. So what I'm going to do in a windy condition is I'll light the torch, put a little back pressure on it, snap it in. And all I did was slow down that burning velocity and let it snap back up next to the tip. Again, depress the cutting action lever, readjust the flame, and you're ready to go. Always remember, oxygen first, fuel gas last. And the third way to do it is to give it a little of each gas. A little fuel and a little oxygen. Then you can walk it up. Press the lever, adjust the flame. Always remember, oxygen first, fuel gas last. And those are your three basic ways. Could you describe how you would achieve a neutral flame? Sure, Ken. It's, it's going to be a little bit different than what you're used to with acetylene. As you know, when you use acetylene, you'd turn on the acetylene until the soot was out of the flame. You'd add the oxygen, pull it back into a fine point, and that would be a neutral flame. Well, because of the characteristics of the gas, I can do that same thing, but I have a wider, a wider window to do it in. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Again, turn it on a quarter turn, 
ignite the, ignite the fuel gas, add the oxygen, and readjust it to a neutral flame. See when these points are real sharp down in there? When I pull that back in, I'm at the neutral flame. Now that's the low end of the tip. When I walk it up, when I say walk it up, what I'm doing is making it hotter. Until you hear that whistle. That's where the tip's designed to run. Again, when I pull these in, see how, see how they're feathered? That's a carbonizing flame. Neutral flame, when I pull them back in tight. And an oxidizing flame is when I turn it down here. You want to run it in a neutral flame when you bring it back to those get sharp. You press the cutting lever, readjust if necessary. Then you can always check it by taking a look. You see the real fine, sharp, stark on there? That's a good neutral flame. Are there any troubleshooting tips? Uh, yes, there is, Ken. There's a multitude of tips for all of the fuel gas. Depending upon the application you're looking at, um, if it's clean plate, if I want to gouge a tip out, if I want to gouge an old weld out, uh, if I want to cut next to a bulkhead, we have several tips available for all of the fuel gas, as we do for a set lead. The most common difference is a general purpose tip or a GPP versus a high pre tip or an HPP. A uh, general purpose tip would be used for cutting clean metal in a fab shop, etc. When I get into the HP tip, it's a little bit easier to light. It'll also give you a little bit better preheat. So if I got to go through some rust or cut off an old uh, rivet head or something, I would use an, uh, an HPP. Um, the rest of them, gouging tips, they're all available. Tim, I see we have some heating nozzles here. Could we go through these? Sure. Um, again, there's several tips made for the different fuel gases. The ones we're going to talk about here are all in the fuel gas tips. This is a standard number eight multi-flame tip. You know, this is I'd be used for alternate fuel gas to heat up a, a piece of plate or a piece of angle I wanted to bend, etc. Remember we talked about acetylene with the pinpointed heat? Well, and this gives you the enveloping heat or the saturating heat. Well, if I want to get that pinpointed heat, we have a CHT or a concentrated heat tip. That's what this is. So there's many ways to do it. Well, Tim, this has been great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Keep in mind, I can do anything with the alternate fuel gas. The misconception, again, is the fuel gas does the work. It's the cutting action that does the work. With the proper equipment, the proper gas, for the recommended procedure for that particular process, I can do anything with alternate fuel gas as I can with acetylene, with the exceptional weld.